I simply titled the first sermon for this year, Is Better Possible or Is It Possible to Become Worse? All of us look to be better, not to be worse, isn't it? Yeah? It's only in marriage vows you say for better and for worse. All right? So, so that you are there. Uh, I want to lay down some preliminary uh, thoughts here before diving into what I believe it's seven things that we can do, not just for the year, every part of our life, every day of our lives, you know, to sustain that. Um, this year, so it's uh, just thinking through, praying through, just doing different things. One of the Psalms that I felt very strong for our church is Psalm 65. So what's going to happen is I'm going to be doing, writing the devotions uh, as much as I can and then post it on all of us on our membership chat and uh, post it to different ones so that uh, we are able to just grow with that psalm and understand the promise of God through that. And also Sunday mornings at the prayer time to just take different parts of that psalm and different psalms and to just build our faith in prayer. Yeah. So having said that, when it comes to physical growth, so you know right now, all the gym memberships have increased, right? Everybody has signed up. But by March, they will be giving you more discounts because by March, people stop going to the gym. So everybody will be excited. We enroll for different things. But, you know, we, we always have this New Year resolutions, goals. Nothing wrong with it, but doing it the right way is important. So when we look at physical growth and health, we have two kinds of uh, practices and disciplines. Yeah, <clears throat> physical growth and disciplines. We have trainers. Is that not true? If you, if you are a runner, you know, one of my friend's uh, son is a state runner. And uh, <clears throat> uh, the parents are consistently looking uh, for, for good coaches for them. And uh, one of them is also uh, a squash player. And they, they kind of got Nicole David to different ones to prep him up and uh, so, so he was talking to me, he said, hey, do you, do you know? I said, I don't even know how to hold a squash racket, like, you know. And, so on. and uh, But he's so interested on uh, the whole thing, just making sure uh, the son eats right, trains correctly. Uh, why? He, he wants to develop him well. So there are practices, right? We have trainers. But on the other side, we also have what you call doctors, right? Uh, practitioners of why. Uh, if you get injured then you need therapy, right? If you get injured, you need therapy. If you get sick, you need the doctor. So through nutrition and exercise, the trainer helps you to be a better player, a better runner. But when you, uh, so you can progress physically, but when you get sick or you injure yourself, uh, the doctor gets you back on track, not the trainer, right? The doctor will get you that. So we, we see this dynamic, you need the doctor to put you, get you back on track, you need the trainer to get you better on the track. Now this is also true for our spiritual life, for our, our mental state, our emotions, this is also the same thing, yeah, it's true that way. So spiritual disciplines are like training, disciplines that grow you into a person, Disciplines form in us character. Discipline form in us attitudes. Or some of them call it haptitudes, habitual attitudes. So some of us may be so sick in our character, we don't realize it. We actually have a big character flu. And we need Dr. Jesus to work through us, to give us uh, his pills, you know, his word, to, to work through our lives. So... It's true, same thing. Uh, so we also go to a spiritual gym daily and work out our own heart, our mind, our spirit, our lives, we work it out. So these are spiritual disciplines that grow us, that develop us, that nurture us, that make us better people. One of the things I was saying at the end of the year was 2024, becoming a better version of ourselves. Huh? Becoming a better version of ourselves. What are some of the things that we will always say, yeah, we know prayer, but I hope today you, you, you hear, engage with the word, and as we unfold it through the weeks, that we understand it better and we go a bit deeper.
prayer and reading the word are not the only spiritual disciplines. There are many others that we work at. But there are some that which I would call defensive spiritual disciplines. You've heard about aggressive driving, defensive driving, yeah? So in sports, you have, you know, your offensive and your defensive, yeah. So I call this defensive spiritual uh, disciplines, which means this. When I, when I look at scriptures, different scriptures, I want to see how I can deal or how I can treat the problems I'm facing or the difficulties that I am at with right now because it needs to be dealt with. So it's a defensive spiritual discipline, okay? Uh, two great Psalms, actually 42 and 43, really help us think through this. And we will do it, we'll unfold it through the weeks, all right? <clears throat> but I want you to think of your spiritual disciplines, working on the gym. Three things that we will do through, through the year, through the year. Okay, I haven't started my sermon yet. We, people say, don't start with the problem. I think we will start looking at issues, challenges, where we are at, where we need to go, where do we need to grow, personal life, family life, you know, work life, student life, whatever it is. Why? Because we, we face issues every day around us. So, and deep inside, the problem could be this. We are spiritually thirsty and dry, and we don't know it. We're deep inside, you know, we, we long like a deer, the scripture says, longing for water, and we can't seem to find that right spring. So, and this happens to even dedicated Christians. We, those have been long-time Christians. And those who are born in Christian homes, actually most of the times, have this danger. Because somewhere there, we feel like, I have a disconnect with God. I have a disconnect with church. I have a disconnect with community. Where, where is this all going? Is this real? Is it worth? So, and God has solutions for it. God has very clear guidelines for this. So, new Christians, when you're born, you know, you've just received Jesus, you're responding to the Lord. And sometimes we have this place of what we have doubt in our faith. We have doubt in Christ. Anyone here, no problems at all, always high tied with your faith in God? None, right? We all have challenges, right? At different times, you know, I can even wake up and say, why the heck am I even a pastor? Why am I even preaching? Uh, this is sincere honesty to you, you know? Why am I laboring with all this? Why do I need to do this? God, are you real? So don't backslide with me saying that, okay? But one of the failures is we have not learned to be honest with our struggles. We always masquerade. And in that masquerade, we blame shift. If I'm not engaging God, I've got somebody to blame. I've got something to blame rather than say, can I take a good look in the mirror? I need a doctor. I need to check my heart. I need to check something here. Something is not working. So it, it's always important for us to learn how to deal during our spiritual dry times. Because we can be so... This is the challenge here. This is the challenge here. I can be spiritually so dry, but riding high at work. Which you think I'm going to address? I'm not going to address my dryness because I'm enjoying work. I'm enjoying my seven-month bonus. I'm enjoying my straight A's. I, I'm enjoying everything. And I, I'll say, yeah, it happens. And yes, we go through that. So how do we deal with that? It's a normal part of our faith journey. So once we are able to discern that and say, hey, you know what, let me be honest with where I am at. Let me be honest with where I am. Uh, I, I forget who the conversation I was having with. We were talking about uh, illnesses. And uh, they said, the doctor wrongly diagnosed this person. 
I said, could it be that person wrongly told the doctor what was wrong with them? That they were not honest enough to say, actually, I ate this or I drank too much. Uh, you know, I, I, I've got these bad habits. Uh, I actually, you know, I, I, that's not the place that I'm pain, I'm aching. I'm actually, I have all these other problems. Because if the doctor doesn't hear you say where your problem is, he cannot go and dig into the problem, right? If I am not honest with God, I'm not honest with my community and accountability, then I cannot rightly deal with my problems and mature. You with me? I cannot rightly deal with it. So this is where we look at the cause. Feeling spiritually empty can come from not having enough community. Not having, hey, just now we, we had a few moments of deep worship. Those of us begin to just feel a sense. And what happens? There's a stirring in the heart and say, yeah, huh? I should do more. Yeah, actually I should get more into worship. Those are moments, glimpses that God works in our hearts. Okay? So sometimes we don't have that community. We don't do that. And that dryness becomes more apparent. It can be physical issues. Sometimes you are ill. You're ill for so long that you no longer believe God will do anything. I have such an episode in this present season. You know, I've been having too many uh, physical uh, issues and uh, it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating and finally coming before the Lord and saying, oh, either, there's, there's sin, tell me there's sin I need to deal with. There's a spiritual thing that I need to deal with or come against, I need to do that. But at least tell me where I need to go. I'm not happy, I'm, not, I'm very frustrated with the way I am physically, emotionally, I said, because this whole illness is throwing me off balance from so many things. My, my, my daily discipline routines are all messed up. So you go through that, but being careful not to say, ah, why pray, why bother? And some of us come there. We, we, when we have work challenges, relational challenges, or our heart is cold, and then we just, we, we react. We react in different ways. So we must know the cause. And the challenge is this. When we go through that, we can become ones who criticize spiritual disciplines. Now, I'm sure none of you criticize spiritual disciplines, right? We don't undermine prayer, right? We don't undermine community, the Word of God. Because the moment you do that, it is an open invitation for the enemy to work deeper through that thought. Because our battle is also a spiritual battle. So we become too focused upon ourselves. We need the balance. We need God to speak through His truth. We need God to speak through others. And that's where the third thing, the solutions come through. Okay, when we are dry or whether we are happy, whatever it may be, as we examine ourselves, we come before God, we let the external work on us. Hey, then we ask ourselves hard questions. Hard questions always help us, okay? So this is where we engage God's love, we reflect, we think through, we come to the table of the Lord once a month, and we reflectively look at our lives and say, God, I want to be the better version of myself. I want to be the best that you've designed me to be. Yeah? So for the last three months, October, November, December, we've talked about five purposes. So hopefully you can remember the first one is worship. Then we have fellowship. Then we have discipleship or ministry. Ministry, discipleship, and reaching out to others, evangelism. How we want to build these areas in our lives. <clears throat> then we talked about the seven pillars Prayer and intercession. We want it to be a pillar in the church. 
growing in quantity and quality. What is it? To mature, to multiply, one bringing one. And anyway, I want to say this to the, the, to the uh, youth culture, all the gu- uh, girls and guys who went out of your way to pray for your friends and bring them in and you saw them come. Well done, all of you. Fantastic. So we want to do that. We're believing this year all of us can reach one person. How many people? You sound like you're aching. Come on. We bring what? what? How many people? One. One. Just one person. We're dedicated, committed to pray to reach out to that one person. The second, the other part of the, of the pillar is blessings and building families. Presence different, driven worship. To be word driven and spirit led. To embrace the supernatural. We want to believe God for miracles. No, we cannot settle for less. And we want to be a generous people, a giving church. So like I said, the Psalms that I want to be bringing through different parts of our prayer times is Psalms 65. We're not going to settle for less. We will mature. We will multiply. We will grow. We will know the Lord better. Our worship will be deeper. We will reach out to others, and we will be passionate and intentional in our faith. Amen? Thank you for that underwhelming response. So where do we begin? Uh, Now I begin my sermon. And we have communion today, okay? So where do we begin? Well, the seven things that I want to bring to you. Not just today, not just this year, for the rest of our lives. When I believe when we adopt these habits and we work at it, it will contribute to a purposeful life, to a transformative life, okay? We're going to look at the scripture we looked at a few months ago, Luke 13, verse 6 to 9. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard. And he went to look for it, sorry, he went to look fruit for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, he says, for three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. That's quite, it's an exclamation mark. Cut it down. He said, why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year. And hence, we got the whole thing we're saying, one year. And well, this is the tree, this is us. But let's say that's the Holy Spirit and the Lord who is digging around us to do something. He says, leave it for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. Notice two things. I will dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. So two things we notice there. He says, I will dig around it. I will fertilize it. Digging takes effort. Digging can be painful. Fertilizer. Does fertilizer smell well or smell bad? So here he said, I'm going to do two things. Digging and fertilizing. We are Trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, the scripture says. This year, let God do the digging, and we also do it with him, and we fertilize our lives, okay, so that we can grow and bear much fruit. Can I hear an amen? Amen. All right? So, what are the things that we can do to work at this? Well, we start with the most important, daily prayer and communion with God. Daily disciplines, if I am an athlete, there are daily disciplines. Um, Some of you may may remember Anastasia, this lady who won the silver medal uh, in the SEA Games, one of the first few, uh, the big walk. So I I got to know her. She's actually a Sentul girl, you know. And I said, tell me a bit about your training Oh, she said, Pastor, very challenging. Why? She said, you know, if you think on a rainy day you want to sleep, the coach will tell you 
you may as well quit and not walk and run anymore. Don't bother coming back. She said, so even when it's raining, my father will take me on the motorbike, take me to the stadium. And she said, there, you know, very reluctantly. But she said, over the years, all that the coach, she said, sometimes I hated him so much, you know. But she said, because of that consistency, I broke the national record. I broke the national record. Scripture for this. Do not be anxious about anything. I want us to pause there. Are we worried about anything at all? Come on. Lying spirit, come out. We are. Can be anything, right? Can be a bunch of things. Okay? Do not be anxious about... Does this sound ridiculous? Do not be anxious about anything. Money, health, relationships, whatever. Do not be anxious about anything. But, can everybody shout, but? But. Look at the shift. In everything, I was going to give you something amazing here. But in everything. Anything, everything. But in Everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Again, you look at it and say, is this for real? The wisdom of God is this. When we engage how God asks us to look at things, it becomes a transformative power. You stop complaining and you start giving thanks. Don't you think that makes you a better person? So now look again. Does that look ridiculous? No. When you are anxious, you lose your temper. You criticize people. When you have challenges at work, you throw everybody under the bus except yourself. When you have challenges at church, who's the first person you go for? Listen, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer. What does that mean? I immediately come to the place I'm saying, I cannot do it in my strength. God, I need you. God, it doesn't make sense, but I need to come. You see, it's acknowledging I need God. It's humbling myself and saying, God, I need you. It's transformative. It tells us to have our right focus by prayer and supplication. And some point at the next month or this month, I will deal with this one and break down the word prayer and supplication and what does it really mean. And with thanksgiving, this three, prayer, supplication, thanksgiving. And what is my, my thing here? Daily prayer and communion with God. Daily coming before God and bringing my and say, cast all your cares upon the Lord for He cares for you. Bringing our concerns, bringing our challenges, bringing our fear, our lack, bringing it all before God, our hurts, our troubles, our concerns. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I don't want to thanksgive, I want to show God my fist. I want to scream and say, where are you? I don't want to go to church. You haven't answered my prayer. Why should I bother reading the Bible? I do my fair share. Why should? By prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Watch verse 7 now. And, everybody shout that word. And the peace of God. Anxiety replaced by? It's transformative. The first reading of it, if we don't look at it carefully, it sounds ridiculous. But you see, God is not a genie or Santa Claus. If I'm not going to engage on my knees, 
Why do I want the heavens to open? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Just now I said ridiculous. Yeah, it surpasses that ridiculous thinking. Will God, if, if, you, if you had a physical Bible, I would have said, highlight, circle it, underline it. The word God, it will guard your hearts and your minds. Where we get trouble most, our thoughts, our hearts. So we start with that place of God, I come to you. Church, nobody is going to hold a cane unless yeah, one lives in your house. I mean, now, <laughs> yesterday, those who were there yesterday will know. Uh, you know, nobody's going to say, read your Bible and say, hey, really. Some of us are too, uh, Christians sometimes are just too arrogant to respond to simple truth. If I, together, you and I, I'm not taking hold of God in the morning, we, I don't care what your husband says, what your wife says, what your boss says, what your teacher says, what your fitness guru says, whatever. Do what the word says. He's God. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen? Does that make sense? Okay, at least a few. Does it? I mean, church, does it make sense? Yes. Get all of God. Not gym membership, spiritual membership. This year, every day, take that step of faith. Take that step of commitment, of discipline. Lord, I want to come before you in the morning. Lord, if you want to use this scripture, use it. Lord, I bring my anxiety to you. I bring everything to you. And I want to lift up a thanksgiving to you. Lord, I want to thank you for your goodness, for your love for God. All these years, God, you've been gracious to me. Number two, studying and applying God's word. Now you notice I didn't say read the word. I said study. Because I can read for the sake of reading without letting the word read me. The word is a mirror. Sometimes we don't like. And somebody has said that to me. Don't ask me to read the Bible. Why? Because I don't like what it says to me about me. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like what it says. Because it's telling me I need to change. <laughs> Studying and applying God's word. Psalms. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Your word, it doesn't automatically, magically appear. If I want to walk a path... I've got to grab a lamb. When I hold the lamb, the path is obvious. If I don't take the lamb, if I don't take that light, if I don't take that word, then the path can be perilous. It can be different. I can choose a path that God may not want me to be on. But a path that I want to be on because His light will shine on the path that benefits us the most. Where else my assumptions and somebody else's opinion may sound like that light, but it's not. Regular engagement. God's Word gives us discernment, wisdom. Third, a bit of an overlap here. Cultivating gratitude. 1 Thessalonians. Uh, <coughs> here we go again. Rejoice always. <laughs> Be anxious for nothing. Rejoice always. 
Pray without ceasing. Hey, I got to work. Yes. I got to study. Yes. You can be weak at work and you can carry anxiety of a, of a problem. You can be at work and be angry with somebody else through the whole day. Think of it. You can be at work and you can be praying through your heart through the day. You can be in school. You can be in class. You can be a housewife. You can be anywhere. But constantly, your spirit can be reaching and say, Lord, that area, Lord, your word says. You don't have to say it out. People think, you know, you've lost it. But meditating. Rejoice always. Sometimes when people walk in, you see black clouds and thunder and lightning follow. They look like they've been dipped into a bottle of vinegar. Can't smile. Smile very precious, very expensive. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Here it goes again. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. These three things that I just talked about in the scriptures, do you think it starts curing negativity? Do you think it starts dealing anxiety? It starts dealing with fear? It starts correcting attitudes in us? It does. <clears throat> Paul and Silas. We, we remember that scripture in Acts 16 or that story. They get beaten up, they get thrown into prison, smelly, stinking, dirty prison. What does Paul and Silas do? What do they do? They start singing hymns. And then, like I said it before, man, there was the first jailhouse rock. Elvis Presley is not the originator of that. The whole earth shook, the jail the doors broke open. Not only, they said, the scripture says that all the others were hearing them. I mean, can you imagine all the other prisoners are saying, mad fellas. We are suffering here. These jokers are singing praises to God. What a bunch of lunatics. But after the jail doors broke open, they said, powerful, sing more. <laughs> and the jailer who wanted to kill himself because he thought they had run away because he'll be executed. And Paul shouts and says, don't harm yourself. We are here. Takes them home, cleans up their wounds, and he becomes a believer. Our attitude in how we choose to deal with circumstances, our year, our life, becomes a powerful witness to those around us. It becomes a powerful witness to those around us. Number four, practicing humility and servanthood. Philippians 2, 3 to 4. Do nothing. Can you see the, the absolute, you know, it gets... Be anxious in nothing. Rejoice always. Do nothing. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Wow. It covers every angle, isn't it? A bit challenging. Selfish ambition. We all love to elevate ourselves and our, our own issues, yeah? Vain conceit. We can see it actually deals with pride. He says, rather in humility, value others. You see, it never starts with humility first because we can always have false humility. So it deals first with selfish ambition and vain conceit. Rather in humility, value others above yourselves. How many of us think this is so easy to do? Because... We often cherish our own opinions. We have drawn opinions about others, about issues. And many a times, we cannot get away from that. And it becomes an idol in our minds and in our hearts. And we form conclusions out of it. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, 
but each of you to the interests of others. Does this not deal with our heart and our mind? Because I can live a life where, hey, what am I going to get out of church? What do I get out of this company? What benefits do I have? I'm not saying don't go, go and work and have nothing, no. We are always looking, what can my parents give me? What can my spouse give me? What can I get out of this relationship? What can I get out of church? What can I get? What can I get? What can I get? What can I get? Have we ever thought about, what can I give? What can I give? Jesus, the most amazing example, John 13, washing the disciples' feet. So we do foot washing. Foot washing is just an example, or rather a, a, a formality that we do. We said, okay, but we need to wash people's feet. How? By how we serve. If you need to be screamed at at home all the time to do something right, there could be a lot of conceit in you. If you need to be told a few times at work <clears throat> to do the right thing, pause and ask yourself, why do you do that? So anywhere of our lives, so this, this seven things <clears throat> that I'm talking about, it covers every spectrum of our life. It covers your life at home, your marriage with your parents, with your children, in church, at work, in your business, in school, anywhere. It covers it. So remember I started talking about the gym. If I am wanting to be a great athlete, I have a coach. And when I get sick, I have a doctor. So spiritually, we do the same. Do nothing <coughs> out of selfish ambition. And the word is ambition or vain conceit. Sometimes what I want, I don't care what anybody else says. And this is where we also have tantrums, isn't it? I want to go for that concert. Well, you know your parents maybe don't have the money. or You, you know what? Tantrum time, or you want that sneakers, or you want whatever it may be, you know you will scream enough, do enough stupidity to get what you want. That is selfish ambition and vain conceit. See, we, church, listen, many a times Christians themselves don't like the word of God because the word of God is a light. It exposes our hearts. how we egg other people on, how we irritate others because we want to get our way, how we dominate conversations, how we refuse to do what is right. And sometimes we need a title to serve. If I, if I you know, if pastor calls me chief intercessor of the church, whew, I will be there at five in the morning before he shows up on Sunday. You know, I'll be there every evening, you know. Whew, you know, why, I'm chief intercessor. You know, I'm going to go and uh, well, I'm going to bring people. You don't need to be called chief intercessor. Just intercede with the chief. <laughs> you know, if I'm, no. Serve the Lord with gladness and joy. Amen? You sound so sad. Come on, serve God with gladness. Amen? Yes. yes. Everywhere of our lives. Okay, I've got three more. Young people, we tahan a bit for lunch, okay? Bole. Okay. Number five, seeking wise counsel. Scripture. For Proverbs 11, 14. For lack of guidance, a nation falls. 
We can park on this a long time, isn't it? But victory is won through many advisors. The Bible is loaded with stories, history of the world, history of the church, our own lives, the council. Today we have these people called influencers, right? Influencers. I don't know whether we wanted to call them influenza or influencers. Some of them like influenza. They, get, they make you catch a cold and behave erratically, you know? Tell me how crazy is this? So-called influencer. Got 50,000 people following. This rice cooker, very good. You make biryani rice? Oh, come on, soft. My husband love it, my children love it. Amoy, Achong, Mutus, Minachi, everybody, tomorrow go and buy. Why influencer? Influenza already, you caught. Young people, this dumb TikTok fillers. Your parents can be telling you the right thing, but you idiotic young people sometimes go and listen to these fools who will tell you, why follow God? Hey, tell them, ask that question when you are sitting before a hellfire. Please listen very carefully. Who is influencing you? It's very convenient to be influenced by people who don't even know how you look like, don't even know your name, but you are so bored to look at it and follow them. I'm sure none of you young people do that, right? Right? Your parents, week in, week out. Hey, sometimes housewife, you also a bit dungu, lah, go and listen to all these ladies. Your parents do all that they can. The church will do all they can. But you are so arrogant and self-conceited that you go and listen to ding-dong bells who don't even know you. And you think you're hip-hop. No, you're a dope. Hey, who's influencing you? Okay, everybody just clear your throat for a while. <coughs> Hard truth is not liked, isn't it? But it's a lamp that will tell you, you walk on that track, you're going to end up in a ditch. This fellow will say, eat only this much, then all go and eat that little. Mother cook nice meal all? No. My influenza says, oh, I mean influenza, yeah. You won't say, but hey, think of what you are doing. Think. Seeking wise counsel. And sometimes at work, well, my boss, uh, my boss said, you know, church when you feel like going. Why? Because he's giving you bonus. A true story. Three, three families they come from a small village. Husband, wife, husband, wife, just good friends, good friends. They became very prosperous in their business in, in KL. Got to know the Lord. And uh, amazing. All had children. Of course, their aspiration is, hey, will our children take, I, I know two of the families, okay? And uh, will our children take over? the business or not. We have worked so hard, you know, it's become, in, it's an international, I mean, it's in eight countries, We've done very well. These guys have worked very strong, godly principles. When it came, one passed away, the two decided retirement. The, that first part of their dream came true. The children actually took over the business. Uh, not all of them, the older ones took over, the younger ones did their own thing, settled in other countries. Along the way, compromise came in. And this guy happens to be in a church where I know the pastor quite well. And it's a sizable church. And one day during the, the, the service, 
This guy comes in late with his family. But they needed to adjust some seating. I mean, big hall. And he says, oh, so sorry, can you sit? And he turns around and tells this guy, you just look at the arrogance. My tithe and offering pays your salary. That, that associate pastor just looked at him and was like, what? My tithe and offering pays your salary. When the senior pastor spoke to him, he says, I don't take my counsel from you. I have a group of people. You know how successful we are? The pastor said, he said, my heart was shattered, Elisha. He said, because I know the father before he died. So the father is such a godly man. He said, all the, he said, this guy, and he says, the issue is, is the people he hangs around with. And the group of people in the office, he, the Christians, he will also say, you don't have to do what your church tells you to do. <laughs> Careful whose counsel you take. Careful. And again, I come to the young ones. Careful what your friends tell you to do. Behave. Hey, honor your parents. Be careful. Honor your parents. Of course, if they ask you to do the right, the right things, honor God. Then. But if you know how to honor God, you will know how to honor them. Everybody all right? Breathing or not? It's too quiet, lah. Wait, clear throat, clear throat. <clears throat> clear throat, clear throat, clear throat. Okay, okay. So remember now we call them influencers, not influencers. Number six, very quickly. Fostering forgiveness and reconciliation. <coughs> and I have the scripture. Be <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> bearing with one another, bearing, it's lifting up, bearing. If one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so also, so you also must forgive. Do, do you realize how this is framed? That means our forgiveness never supersede God's. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God paid the price for our sin. We're going to come to the table of the Lord. We're going to take this emblem. We're going to say the bread, the wafer, God's body broken for me. The cup, God's blood spilled for me. Forgiveness, love, reconciliation, God transforming my life. With that perspective, he is saying, why? Do we not have relational conflicts all the time? Yes, no? Yes, what? Do you realize sometimes we bear grudges, we've banned them for years? And many a times, it's our self-conceit, our arrogance and pride. How to go and say, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, it's like, I'm so... Uh, be healed in Jesus' name, you know? Um, we, we cannot say, look, I was wrong. I was wrong. Did somebody's shoppy just go over? Appalaini. <laughs> <laughs> what are you shopping for? Timer for me or what? Bearing, any potong steam, you know, all of a sudden. <laughs> Bearing with one another. God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness. Okay, come, come, come. Get back here, get back here, get back here. Thank you. God's forgiveness can never be below our forgiveness. 
our forgiveness is always coming with an understanding of what God has done. Bearing with one another. And the word bearing, it's, it's very descriptive, isn't it? Because it can be so challenging to, to stand with people and to, to walk, to, isn't it? it? It is. Bearing with one another. And if one has complained against another, forgiving each other. So when you think again, when you go back, when we start with number one and number two, God, His Word, then all this follows suit, isn't it? All this works true. Each of these steps, when we engage it, has a transforming ability within it. Let me finish. Seven. <clears throat> Living with purpose and generosity. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We can't argue with this, isn't it? For we are God's handiwork. God formed us, shaped us. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. How to skirt around the scripture? I can't skirt around it. By incorporating all these habits, <clears throat> the seven thoughts that I have for this year, guided by spiritual disciplines, guided by scripture, we align ourselves with God's design, God's transformation. It goes beyond the success we will enjoy in our life in any way. We have a rich life when Christ is at the center. I'm going to invite you to stand up. Um, <clears throat> we're going to take the communion. But there's a prayer I've prepared. It's not on the slides. I'm going to lead you in it. <coughs> Church, we need God's grace to live life daily. Amen? We need God's grace. We need God's guidance. We need God's grace to live these principles. So can you ask and I ask together today for ourselves, for our families, for our church. God, give us strength for this year. Give us the ability to persevere, Lord, that we can adopt these habits. Can we do that right now? Can you just think through of the seven? If you remember them. Daily prayer and communion with God. That was the first thought. Then it was studying and applying the work of the God's Word. Third is cultivating gratitude. Fourth, practicing humility and servanthood. Five, seeking wise counsel. Six, fostering forgiveness and reconciliation. Seven, living with purpose and generosity. We need God's strength to live this. <clears throat> if I can have the communion packs passed out, and will you, you can open it up, but wait for one another, and we are going to pray together, all right? Give it to some of the young people also they can give. really want to move the needle. It's okay, open up guys. It's noisy anyway, yeah. And I am very 
intentional on how I want to raise the young, our teens, that they don't keep getting swallowed up. Like I said, you know, these influencers, and they become an influencer themselves in the right things. They will have the courage to stand up to what is right. They will have the boldness to stand up and not be afraid that they will lose some friends, friends who add no value to their lives. So you'll see the young getting more involved in positions where those of us will get used to because it's their time. Ken, go ahead, please make all the noise. <laughs> Open it up. Everybody got it? Great. I want us to pray. If you will follow me in this prayer, okay? So we'll take about a few minutes and then we'll take the communion. Say, Father, as we stand, at the threshold of this new year we come before you acknowledging your authority power and goodness we reflect on the past we are grateful for your faithfulness and we look to the future with hope and anticipation Lord we dedicate our lives afresh to you. In this moment, we surrender our plans, our dreams, our ambitions, our families. We place them at the foot of the cross. May your will be done in our lives. May your purpose be established in all that we do we commit our days our hours and moments to you seeking your guidance in every decision grant us wisdom to discern your voice in the midst of all the noise in the world give us your strength to follow where you lead Father, we dedicate our hearts to love you more deeply and to love others as you love us. May our lives be a reflection of your grace and compassion. Help us to be the light in darkness, showing kindness and mercy to those who we encounter on this journey. Lord Jesus, we dedicate our hands to serve you and our feet to walk in your ways. May our actions align with your teachings and may our lives bear witness to your transformative power. Holy Spirit, we dedicate our minds to be renewed by your truth. Guide our thoughts. Renew our perspectives. Let the fruit of your Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let these overflow in our lives. Lord, as we embark in 2024, we place our trust in you. We surrender our fears and our anxieties, knowing that your perfect love Passes out all fear. 
May our faith in you be unwavering and may we find our refuge and our strength in your unfailing love. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.